Welcome to episode 518 of This Week in League. I'm Nate. And I'm Jay. There you go, Glenny. He's back. We're all back. And it's I'm going to be a fucking double episode this week, and it's going to be the shortest fucking episode you ain't ever seen, because Origin Time is upon us, which is almost like mid-season, like, holiday. Yes. Or take, yeah, sort of, it's certainly in, in terms of the main show, so um, it's a great opportunity to look at half the games. Watch half the games on the weekend, and uh, I know Glenny's so busy that you must be lo- you must be loving the the lighter load, the lighter schedule in Origin. I, that's I, I just don't, I don't, I don't know. appreciate no, the shade that you're throwing. Sarcastic the sarcasm. About that. Motherfucker! You got, you got, you got on the call. On said you, How you got are on the you, call Glenn? Said you were busy. Busy. I acknowledge. I'm I'm, I'm holding hell. space for you on a Tuesday night, Glenny. Understanding your busyness that you that you are currently undertaking. This this is a safe space. Exactly. It wasn't it wasn't because of my business that I, I know, fucking no, no, we no, didn't I didn't record say... last night. So at no, best I might be the, the world's call, second mate. busiest. You said, How are you? You said busy. <laughs> No, he said, you're not around much. Yeah. I said, yeah, because Fucking, I'm busy. Said, Welcome to this week's so, so, episode not, of This Week in Jay's Confused as Fuck. This Week in Glenny, in Glenny fucking playing playing semantics. Yeah. <laughs> Just like every other fucking week. <laughs> fucking good old oh, Glenny <laughs> Gaslighter. Oh. <sighs> now I'm busy Look, and you're trying, annoyed. You're so trying let's nice. fucking go. Oh. You're, you're trying. You try, you try and be nice. You try, you try a bit well, harder. Not, it's not even being nice. Yeah, nice isn't your thing, mate. Because even when you're trying to be nice, you well, still you come know, off as a cunt. You don't mean that. That's your let's thing. Take it to, let's take Let's take it to the fucking people. <laughs> let's be real. Get you. Get get Nick. Nick. Oh fuck you. <laughs> get in here. Which which people? <laughs> <laughs> Unplug your headphones that's, so you can hear me. <laughs> that's a biased witness. <laughs> Motherfucker, that's a biased Ugh. witness. Against both parties, if I'm honest. Right. <laughs> Pro so you and easy me. Week, obviously, we have the recaps from the weekend. Then we've got Origin coming up tomorrow night, Wednesday night. It's Tuesday night when we're recording the show. And we've also got a, uh, a couple of games. I, honestly, I haven't even fucking looked at the teams yet. Um, how many games have we got this weekend? Oh, fucking tons. Some. There's only three buys. Okay. I'll bring it back up. That's more than I expected. I retract everything I said about the mid <laughs> the mid season fucking light schedule break. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> Sorry, Fuck. Glady. You gotta get busy. One again. fucking week and we're back to the grind. Sorry, pal. I mean I'm not That's sorry okay. anymore though, you can't, but yeah. I was sorry five minutes ago. Um Yeah. Yeah. Good. So, That's, do you have anything to report before we get started? Like Anybody? Ah, uh, scored a runaway try last night at Touch Football, just saying. Is- no, in the game, the actual game. Scored a try on the weekend as well uh, in the first round of the winner comp, scored a try. Okay, the, okay let's, let's, let's start two, with the bad news. One. How did you bomb them? What exactly did you do to bomb these ones? Well, um, the first one, the play was coming out my way a little bit quicker than I'd anticipated and I was trying to fade out to the wing but I didn't fade quick enough because I've only got little legs um, and the big cutout ball which would have hit me on the chest had I been fucking hugging the touchline where I was aiming to get to but I just didn't get there quick enough so over the top of my that's, a, that's Corey Patterson line. levels of fucking the other one was uh, Benji, Benji a bit Benji of a fucking rocket the I mean yeah <laughs> it sounds, it sounds to me like the pass cut yeah. you out <laughs> and there was no one on the outside <laughs> I should have caught it. No, yeah. <laughs> Look, I like I like where you're going with that because I uh, I felt I felt ordinary for being out of position. Anyway, did, the second did one. Get, did you get blasted was a bit by of Jackson rocket for being out of position? I've stuck my little fucking mitts out. Listen, I'll tell you a little story. Not Jackson that one. Jackson plays like three um, grades up now. You got to remember. But uh, yeah, Jackson. Yeah, Jackson played A grade, so. He um he showed right. up late and didn't see my try. I was fucking dirty. 
He's just Came like, in with his fucking Beats yeah, headphones fuck you, on, just in a suit, walking into the A-grade locker grade. room, not I'm even watching the, the fucking C-grade Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Uh, but last night, we uh, we played the last round of the social comp, and um, I fucking... I was rucking the ball up, and Jackson... It was the last... Like, we're heading to the fifth... And Jackson's sprinting. Well, he wasn't really sprinting. I was trying to do my sprint, and he was like, "Go down, go down, go down, get, like play the ball." But you're supposed to reach out, you know, and initiate the touch. And I fucking neglected to do that. So I've just, as he's going, "Go down, go down, go down." So to to play the ball, it was it was a bit too many instructions for my little brain. So I've just played the ball without being touched and turned the ball over, and. Much to the delight of some of my teammates who fucking burst into absolute fucking laughter. And then my son is like, you've got to get touched first, dickhead. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. As, he, as he scores three tries and sets up three. And, um, you know what? Yeah. Fucking, I just... Anyway, I copped it all the way home. Then he had to tell his mother when he got home, and fucking the, she, she then just mocked me. <laughs> so, it's good times, good times. Anyway, people don't like to hear about my fucking stories. My recap. Who said that? Who said that? Someone come at you. Apparently, they didn't do that publicly. Though. Some I didn't do that. Did they? <sighs> No, no, it was yeah, yeah, it was oh, in let's one of the. Go more then. What did you do? What else things. did you do? No, Tell me about what you, what you had for lunch last week. What's on your shopping list? Clint? Every every day, in great detail. <laughs> Tell you what I didn't do. Tell you what I didn't do. I didn't listen to some cunt's fucking podcast and fucking for free, and then fucking piss and moan about what they fucking spoke about. That's what I didn't do. You know why? Because I'm not yeah, a I didn't cunt. See that. I did not see that comment. I mean, I'm not going to go looking for it either because I mean, there's no. You know, I don't want to make 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 <sighs> these fucking people famous. Well, yeah, fuck them. Well, welcome. Exactly. Welcome to this week in celebrating fucking middle aged <laughs> achievements, whatever they are. <laughs> fucking good luck trying to get that taken away from us. <laughs> fuck it <laughs> <out>. <laughs> but Tell you what, oh. C grade winger, I, I, fucking honestly, basketball the, the, the coach. I'm absolutely killing it. About the whole touch thing is, is the winger part. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, 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 I don't well, where, where else do you want me to play though that's there, I, I am not equipped to play the yeah. other two potential positions on the field I'm not <laughs> equipped to play wing yeah you didn't talk me through or the runaway try did score so a runaway yeah, try and run away you, from the people <laughs> yeah how many meters, so, how many um, meters was it but this time I was hugging the runaway. how many meters of runaway and, try uh, I okay. would Oh look! I'm going to call it halfway. I'm going to call it halfway. Um, yeah. So Jackson is right-handed, but for whatever reason, I don't know what retardation he was born with. But his left-to-right pass is a fucking laser, and he can throw it. He could probably throw it thirty meters on the on a dime, right? His left-to-right is far better than his right-to-left, which is unusual for a right-hander. Anyway, so it catches a lot of people by surprise. So he's uh, he's in the middle of the field and fades out left, steps back inside and rips this fucking ball straight across the face of three defenders and hits me open on the wing, on the fly. I've burst onto it and uh, caught it. And a guy that's probably, he's the wing at the other, opposite wing had, had to turn and chase. He's a good foot to all of them. He's a tall, lanky thing. And I'm like, oh, I've, I've still, I got my calf taped up. I'm a hot mess. <laughs> Everyone's like, "Go, big fella! Go, big fella!" Like Jackson's like, he "Dive, dad. dad! Dive!" You know he was, like, you know he was fuck, I ain't diving. Dad. Every bone in my body will be. No, oh no, no, no! I'm oh, pretty sorry, no. I was wrong. He, I'm pretty sure he was saying dive, Glenn. And uh, I was like, "No, I'm not. I'm not Fucking diving. Yeah, if I die, every bone in my body will turn to dust." So. Anyway, I got it. I scored, put the ball down, and then three of my teammates, one of which was my son, three of my teammates, turned around and said, 
He definitely got touched <laughs> to the ref. Definitely got touched. They're trying to take it away from me. <laughs> At which point, the op- opposition winger had to turn and, and to the ref and said, I definitely did not touch him. As yeah, my own teammates were arguing and like trying to get it, was, it taken off basically me. basically just shitting on you to do it, you know, just for the fun of it. Yeah. It's not actually seriously yeah, exactly. trying to... Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Gee, that, so that's that sounds verbatim like the court record. Good times, like but very style. much. What? <laughs> he definitely got touched. Definitely. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> I did not touch him. I definitely did not. Oh, touch he's him. fucking. <laughs> welcome to welcome to Jayland, where you're always two degrees from pedophilia. <laughs> oh fuck. Fuck me. Well, that's man. good. That's good. I, I like I like hearing the story about the runaway tries because it just tells me what I mean. Like it must have been a fucking. I'm, I'm loving pass. the touch footy at the moment. It's good. Like the the quality of the ball to put oh, you in runaway it. position yeah. is like an absolute fucking yeah. like world class fucking <laughs> pass. <laughs> <laughs> fucking absolutely ripped it. So. Which is lucky because if I didn't have that much space, I most certainly would have got. Nice one, nice one. All right. Anyway, if anyone doesn't, if no one has anything else to report before we get started, might as well get into these games, hey, and blast through this. Um, First one on Thursday night uh, down at uh, Dolphins. The Dolphins twenty six defeated the St George Illawarra Dragons twelve. Dolphins points came through a double to Jermaine Osako. Nichols Milford also with tries. uh, Osako four conversions and a penalty goal. (laughs) Dragons, their tries came through Jack Bird and Toby Couchman. One conversion, one penalty goal to Zach Lomax. I just want to start off here, if, if we can, before we, before, well, before we get into the game. For me, so, more, you, you go, I'll sorry. very quickly touch on the Dragons naming fucking JDB as captain um, for this. <laughs> that, comes, that falls under standard. <laughs> Yeah, it fucking does. But I, I know the temptation here is to take the piss and, and laugh. But if I'm a Dragons fan, that is yet another fucking clear sign that my front office is absolutely fucked and will never build a successful football organisation. Because one of two things has happened yeah. here. The powers that be have completely missed exactly how he is perceived by the general public. Now, I'm not making. Do you any- reckon? Do you reckon it's the same? Do you reckon his perception of the general public? And certainly, I can speak on behalf of all of us and say that we 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 fall in that, into that category as well. Yeah. Um, do you think that that's the same as the perception of like St George fans and members? Yeah, deep down it would happen. I mean, I've seen I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of got like we know on Twitter saying this is fucked. So, yeah, that's it. So, and it must be this is this is like a management. There, only. there like, is going there is the going to be there is going to be that contingent as there is with every club, who are mm-hmm. you know fuck him, you know um, women, women lie about rape all the time just to get yeah. men in trouble, you know that sort of thing. <laughs> um, the the issue is either that club has absolutely no fucking idea how they are perceived out there in the real world. Yep. Or, now it's okay if they don't, but surely there is a contingent within the club, and I'm talking about digis or social media manager or somebody else whose job it is is to look at what the club is doing on social media and trends around discussions of the club. And who isn't like a boomer as well. Yeah. Yeah. And it means that either they don't feed those things back up the chain or they do feed them back up and they're ignored. Oh, that have to be ignored. I mean, and, surely they'd say them. Well, who knows? Think, who yeah. knows? If you know what the culture's like, do you speak up? No. Um, so that, whatever whatever the story is, for that to slip through, uh, that front office is absolutely fucked. And I, club- saw, I saw a comment, I saw a comment going, like, well, you know, like who else is, you know, sort of experienced and, you know, that could be the captain? Jack Bird? Yeah. Zach Lomax? I mean, it's not like there's it people who can matter. fucking do the job. For, there are, it's it's yeah. one. There are, it's, it's one, not like it's it was sixteen game. debutants and Ben Hunt's playing Origin. <laughs> you know, that's it. It's one game. That's it. That's it. So, I mean, fuck like Jack Bird has fucking been there and done that. He could be the guy. I mean, is he captain's material? No, of course he's fucking. Mm. Isn't, but he's better than fucking. But he's not that old rape boy. Yeah. yeah. 
for sure. That's it. Um, anyway, yeah. on to the football. I tell you, tell you I was I was down uh, I was down at Ready on uh, on Thursday night. Um, uh, my daughter had a dance performance. Um, going down there, probably like the game. What the game started at eight, so I was probably heading down past the ground at about six six thirty. And there's a lot of roadworks on on that road at the moment. And the workers had changed all of those, you know, the the digital signs and everything, the roadwork signs. They changed them to all say, you know, like fins up. And you could see workers in their high vis and that all taking turns, taking selfies of each other, doing the fins up thing in front of the signs and shit like that. I tell you, massive fucking vibe around (laughs) the area for that side still. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, you know, the the successes, uh, and you know, they've got enough wins. So that's a lot of it, but it's just, uh, it's, it's fucking so good to see. Yeah, fuck yeah. Just touch, just to, to extend on that, the the atmosphere at the game and the way the ground look looked. Um, yeah. More games I mean, at it's the good there, we, we went to a couple. Please. We went to a couple there during that COVID year. And, yeah, exactly. And we, we spoke about, there's, there's definitely... Room there yeah, to yeah. expand the stadium and and upgrade, and I just I love I love the leagues club. I love the balcony. They really just with have the to do that. They, they've got that one the really long one where all the corporate hospitality um, is. So on the one long side, so they just need to upgrade that other long side and the short <laughs> side that's not um, backing onto the leagues club. Yep. Mm. Add another five thousand seated spots there and that yeah. would be, that would give you 15 as a, a boutique yeah. suburban and 15 is, is is fine i mean 15 is is what you know you would you know that that's a ballpark of what you could fit into a place like you know like art brookie fucking sharks you know so that's fine 10 10 is not enough mm. obviously which is what they can kind of fit in there just over 10 but yeah i mean make it 15 and i sure. think it's vi- i think it's viable but they are getting a lot of fucking people in there at suncorp as well when they play in there yeah so I don't think they could completely remove that, and they're not putting yeah. a forty, fifty thousand seater out there, as much room as there is out there. No, true. But just the, I don't know, the decision to to bring them in, yeah, is is one of the best, one of the best, and and the way that they've they've gone about it, and and the support that they've got from their community there, and. You know, I know that they had a, a bit of a different scenario than, you know, to use the Tigers or, or even the Dragons or, you know, when when the mergers were happening all those years ago. But you you have the Redcliffe contingent, you have the Redcliffe chance, and it's it's all positive. You don't have, you know, from from my example, yeah. you don't have yeah. the Western Balmain fucking hate That's and all that bullshit like, I mean, doing all and throwing the pulling against one another. Were teams um, that, like I don't know if I don't know if Balmain and West hated hated each other, hated hated, but I mean it's not like there was, it's not like there was like a nah. a friendly thing there, but, but the, and then the other ones like you know Illawarra hated Dragons, <laughs> Manly fucking hates North, and like yeah. the, way, the way they tried to fucking shoehorn all these cunts together, I mean mm. in you know with given twenty five years almost of hindsight, yeah. you know, what the fuck what the fuck were they thinking, <laughs> but you know. Not every club has the fucking balls to kill their fucking weaker partner. <laughs> one day, Come the Steelers. On, one day, the Steelers and the Maggies will sharpen their fucking knives. We're working on and it. Do what they should. We're have working done. on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mag- Maggie's the low key. Yeah, they're waiting for about. It's just, the They're just playing the long game. Come to the party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Well, they wait for him to come to the party and give him an excuse to so send him to Perth. I think the Magpies need to get. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Fair call. Cool. Um, on the game, though, I, I, I was impressed with Milford. Um, I think he's starting to realise what his role is going to be within the club and at this stage of his career. Um, and I think he, I think he likes it. I think it suits him. Um, did some, had some really classy touches and. Um, yeah. overall, the, I, was, I was really again, impressed with the, the Dolphins. They're just continuing along with that, you know, high high floor, lower ceiling style of football, but yep. they're doing all the little things right. It's boring, but it's fundamentals. All of those tiny little mm. and effort areas, and there's another cliche for you within the game, they're paying attention to. And that's all you can ask of them. Um, for the Dragons, 
just I guess directionless comes to mind, as in there didn't look to be too many stages in that game where there were any more than a couple of players that had any idea where the team was heading or had any, any idea what the team was trying to achieve over any period in that game. And I know that they had their, you know, I guess only good player in Ben Hunt out. And he but it really not... did. It really did underscore just just how much he oh, had in charge of absolutely God. everything that happens on that field. Yeah, that's it. And and the next time he's negotiating for a contract, which I believe is soon. Yeah, like he's, he's, I mean, it's kind of now, isn't it? He, he just needs to show up to to the negotiating table and say, "Look, I just need mm. you to pick any twenty minute segment in this game, and that I'm not there. Yeah, and yeah. watch watch your fucking side. Yeah. Then add a zero to whatever you're going to offer me." And maybe we'll talk about me staying here. You inept cunts. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't good at all. No. Anything else you want to add to that? No. The only the only thing I want to add on Ben Hunt, when he signed that contract, yeah. everyone was like, fuck, that's a lot of money for Ben Hunt. He can go anywhere. He can go and he anywhere and get that money. To it. Yeah. And more. That's it. Uh, David. So you can't yeah. believe I'm saying yeah, this, but exactly. Milford and Nicarima both had reasonably good games. The second half fades seem to be a thing of the past. Good bounce back to form. Joey, the only thing better than the Dolphins beating the Dragons would be seeing the Dragons being deregistered for being a shit club and having a shit fan base. Fucking hell. Suck on Glennie's nuts harder. Agreed. Uh, Phil, DeBellin needs to go have a look at the tape of what Ben Hunt does as captain week in, week out, because what he served up wasn't even up to Dragons' low standards. Uh, Ricky, Ricky, well, Wayne must have fair, put a 2015 calendar in Milford's locker. Uh, Lachlan, it's credit to Wayne that he's brought him back from the dead. Fucking has. <laughs> it's good to see Milford play well again. He just needs yeah, to get fitter. Exactly. He'd be a solid 14. You could see when he scored how the team got around him and that he means something to the club. Yes, they certainly did. Next game. Right, okay. We move on to... Oh, the wrong window open. The Eels, 24, defeated the Cowboys, 16. Uh, this one happened down there in Parramatta. The Eels, 24, tries to uh, Greg, Moses, Sivo, and Russell. Moses, four conversions. Cowboys, 16, tries to Drinkwater, a double to Kyle Felt. And uh, conversion Felt, conversion to Townsend. Interesting game, this one. It was a pretty tight contest up yep. until the about the 50, 55-minute mark in Para. Went back to back and stripped them for numbers on either edge and and scored in in both corners and you sort of got the feeling that that Para then you know had the game by the the scruff of the neck and the Cowboys to their credit rallied late to probably make it a tighter contest than what it really should have been and uh, you know in the end it was up to Moses to to seal it and and, and get the Eels home I, I don't I'm not convinced on either side still I still don't think Para is really where they should be. Um, but you know, these wins around that origin time um, are going to be important uh, for them to try and yeah, they're one of these lucky sides that we're scheduling an origin this year, and the and the the form of their players, or at least a selection of, <laughs> of their players, is a massive advantage to them. The fact that you know they they barely lose anybody. I mean, they've got a couple of injuries in there, but you know nothing they haven't been dealing with anyway. Mm. Yeah, and Origin hasn't further weakened them, and certainly like their key positions. Yeah, uh, you know. Almost entirely unaffected by origin. Um, Cowboys, look, you know, it was, you know, while it was, it wasn't, as, it wasn't as close as the scoreline would probably indicate. I mean, Cowboys are a team that is affected by origin. Yeah, you know, and they then they've barely found their feet this season. They sort of, sure. you know, they, they look like they're back, and then they then they cop the fucking West Tigering. Mm. Um, and look, as a response to that, you know, this game was, you know, it was de- it was a decent effort. <laughs> But um, but yeah, yeah. But they still lost because the Tigers destroyed and them. And their bloodline, or whatever. I can't remember what you were saying, but it was some fucking eugenic shit, eugenics. <laughs> yeah. Episode title. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just write that down. Yeah, you, you guys talk amongst Love yourselves it. for a moment. <laughs> Oh, shunt to I debate the spelling. <laughs> he said the Cowboys didn't play any better than last week. They were still shit. This week, Para was slightly less shit than them. Jay uh, said Peyton is a fraud and deserves to be bashed by the media like any other coach, but he must meet the journos in the Porter Dunnies out the back at half time instead of yelling and slapping his players in the face. Andrew 
How would you like to have a team captain like Gutho? 30 seconds wow. after he makes a bad error, he's openly abusing and humiliating his teammates for missing a tackle. Classy. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Yeah. Was that the Sivo yeah. where yeah. Sivo went for the intercept instead of instead of get yeah. 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 And just and an absolute is when he doesn't teammate. do when he's not doing that, he's sort of still like pulling the cunt faces and stuff. Yeah. Like, you know, just like looking like, Oh my god, I can't believe this retard's yeah. on my team. You yeah. know, like that sort of face. Um I yeah. Look, he's one of those players that I mean only para fans are love, but I mean I don't understand why they even they still do. There's there's just too much there's just too much in the con column for that guy. Yeah. And yeah. For me, for me, he's a shit teammate. And in rugby, like rugby league of all team sports, just, I fucking hate that. Like yep. these kinds are going to war. They're not perfect. They're out there busting their ass. And, and then they've got a guy in the trenches yep. with him that's ab- open yeah. who, who, who on them. also has like a couple of <laughs> fucking, field. It's fucking absolute gross. powers a game in him that's it as well it's not like he's fucking yeah who's, who's kind of also Swiss not that guy watch level efficiency where he never makes a mistake never puts a foot wrong never you know no so no. fuck up her. yes correct next game hit some socials I've done them are we done? Yes. Oh, that's that's all. That's all. Was it? Okay. We're done. The Broncos twenty six defeated the Warriors twenty two over in uh, McLean Park in Napier. Uh, the Broncos had two tries to Mariner, Ricky and Man with the other ones. Reynolds four conversions and a penalty goal. The Warriors uh, two tries to DWZ. Nickel Cook start and Montoya with tries. Johnson three of four conversions. Seems funny to say that, given that the Warriors lost the game, but I, th- I think this was another example of just how far the Warriors have have come and how much mentally stronger they are yeah. under Webster. That's strange. You, you and you've gone by. I feel like they created enough yeah. opportunities to yeah. win this game by fucking eighteen points minimum. And and they well, they fucked yeah, them. They should they, have they won. Made some errors, that, you know. But but in years gone by, yeah, true. But in years gone by, yeah, correct. They will turn that into a thirty point loss because they drop their bundle. They then they don't fucking regroup. They start making heaps of silly errors. Give up field position and possession, and the other team, you know, purely by I mean, weight of context possession. Well, though, and the Broncos didn't you know, have runs away you know, with it, but they're, yeah, their best forwards. They, and uh, and their, and their, and their fullback, who's actually turned the entire side around. This of course, season, yeah, yeah. Out of the side, you know, yeah. in, in camp with the Queensland State of Origin side. Mm. I thought Tristan yeah. Saylor was a pretty yeah. competent re- replacement. On um, you know, you can't ask for much more um, for his first game for the club. And um, you know, Reynolds had you know his touches and one of those games, like I said before, at this time of year. You know, teams are pretty happy to get away with whilst they're they're managing the the disruption to their roster with Origin and stuff. So, um, but yeah, I, I think the Warriors be interesting to see as the season progresses and teams start working out who the Warriors are and where they're at, how Webster evolves with that. But yeah, you know, he's right. he's coach of the year right. material. Yeah, moment. honestly, I mean, it's him. It's it, it really you think of who, who are the teams that are overperforming this year based on what you would think going in. Warriors and Redcliffe, yeah, and maybe and maybe Wayne gets there on yeah. like name brand value, yeah. sentimentality, and, 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 the, and, and the lack of players that he's lack yeah. of name yeah, brand yeah. players that he sort of has. But <laughs> Wayne, Wayne getting coach of the year. Can you imagine his acceptance speech? Be, <laughs> he'll, he'll get someone he'll to accept him on behalf. He wouldn't even fucking turn up. Yeah, true. <laughs> he'd, be like, he'd be like, "Fuck that shit." Yeah, he wouldn't even show. Like, yeah, exactly. I got, I got gills. He said. Warriors fans should be mad at Pompey, not the refs. You all done this to yourselves. Yeah. Brendan, I would, like to, shit. I would like to see the 18th team go to the South Island in New Zealand. The whole nation would go off in the local derby. Look at this crowd go off. Levius, absolute dumb fuckery lost that. Same shit, different year. Andrew, thank you, yeah, Tina. You're so hard on yourself. Oh, thank harsh. you, Tina. Thank you, Broncos. 30-year reunion with her. Thank you, Ball Boys. Thank you to whatever drug it was that flew under the radar to get us that win. 
Here you go. Now, um, you're talking about the, 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 the someone there. One of the commenters was talking Take about it. the um, uh, a South Island of New Zealand expansion team. Yes. Sort of thing today. Um, then look, you know, this is you know the usual fuckheads, but um, saying that there's a, a 45 billion dollar naval shipbuilding project and a planned hydrogen power plant and a pivotal role in Australia's space race has Adelaide ready to become the NRL's next expansion franchise. Ugh. I just wanted to get on the record. Once and for all, fuck Adelaide. Fuck off. One the day... Adelaide. The Adelaide one day aliens. When the National Rugby League <laughs> truly is a national competition. Obviously, there's a place for Adelaide. Mm. But if you're fucking putting it before, like, you know, Perth, New Zealand 2... And probably another a number of other contenders that people Bris- have, Brisbane have raised. Brisbane team two and three. <laughs> yeah, Bris- Brisbane teams four through six. Yeah. Um, no. Yes. Tw- settle down. Toowoomba. How settle many, down, how Brett many Plowman, people? Put how, your hand up for the wing. <laughs> how many people? How many people show up to it? I could be the wingers' coach. Everyone. What? <laughs> Well, you got that. Dra- you, you got that. You got that dragons game or whatever they put the there. entire fucking town. How many showed up? Yearly, doesn't it? Yeah, oh, that's what I'm saying. Though. The N word, the N word, brown stand is absolutely fucking, fucking pulsating. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's it called now? Educate me. I don't it's go not up there. Called that? I've been up there like more, twice. Oh, I think it's okay. Duncan. The Duncan is that Robinson. The ground, is that where they play the game? I don't know. Clive, but that's it, Clive. No, they, yeah, so Clive Berghofer, Berghofer Stadium. Not many. Yeah, that's an right. excellent question. It was they're not ready for it. They're not, they're not ready. <laughs> the Toowoomba's not ready. No, there's a, there's a whole precinct a being precinct. built. They're talking about building a stadium out oh, there, awesome. a V8 track. So you know what's going to happen? Oh, it's going to be great. Yeah. You're getting a rugby yeah, league team and a fucking Formula One track. Grove is just going to move it. Yeah, I'd welcome him with open so you arms. So, He's a fucking so great Tumba, human being. So Toowoomba ahead of Ippy, though. 9,000 9, capacity. you really couldn't capacity. do both, right? No. Nah. Not within decades. No. Nah. No, I, I just think Toowoomba captures the... It's And I've said it before. If Imagine if it was Toowoomba, it would be like the Cowboys where all the people come from north and west and miles around to watch the games you'd, you'd capture people kayak in from Grantham all those fans it's fucking <clears throat> man I would say <laughs> I don't know how you get up the range from Grantham man. you'd <laughs> have to be an Olympic fucking level but I, I, I take that you could kayak from there sometimes I, it's easier I would than say that the periphery I'll, I'll of the that. North Queensland Cowboys attract to their games are less fucking touched individuals than what Toowoomba would <laughs> The the regional people Sorry, that say the that Cowboys again? would attract to their game are less fucking touched than the outskirts mm-hmm. of Toowoomba. Yeah, I mean, the, the, you know, the, the money still fucking goes into the turnstiles nah, all the same. No, 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 no. No. There are some special fucking cunts out there. Special fucking cunts. No, like west of, like on west of Toowoomba out, or into regionally outside Toowoomba. It's, it's not fucking. It's oh. not pretty. Yeah, it's Banjo Central. It's yeah, Banjo saying, like, Central. I mean, they make, they, they... Whatever. People in no, people in Mount Druitt can still buy tickets to their ice money through the turnstiles at the entire the entirety of Penrith. Off a super stadium. Where the fuck less, <laughs> less touched. Less touched. <laughs> I just, I just, the, 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 my question. I don't disagree with you at all. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just. My question is, what does that matter? <laughs> Because they they wouldn't regularly come into a football game, right? <laughs> like Glenn, that's what uh, Glenn could get. You know, six family members' birthdays out as tickets and, and go six times a year. They they got fucking one birthday for their entire family. It's fucking no, nah, it's next level out there. <laughs> next level. Yeah, <laughs> trying to have a serious conversation here. Anyway, I'm going to start a petition for the fucking Clydesdales. Go, I'll see it. 
Surely it couldn't be the Clydesdales. They couldn't have the Broncos yeah, that's true. down what, the hill they, and then the fucking up Clydesdales there? up the hill. Surely not. Something with cattle. No, it can't be cattle because oh. you've got cowboys up the thing too. So Narrow-minded cunts. Diggers. Yeah. The Toowoomba Diggers. Major sponsor. Fucking, it's, it's all coming together, Glenny. <laughs> Can you imagine? The T-Bar <laughs> Diggers. I love it. Oh, I love it. I'll fucking buy a season ticket. I'm already sold. Well, no, I wouldn't because I've got, no. I have a spot in the corporate box open. You know, major sponsors oh, corporate box open all the time. No. So it'd be all good. <laughs> but well, if I didn't have that, exactly. I would buy a season exactly. ticket. <laughs> just, just on that... All just right. remind um, me that you said that at the end scoop, of recording. Scoops out. Because I will forget. Oh, scoops, oh yeah, scoops out, scoops up. Scoops down. <laughs> scoops up. Scoops, scoops up. Scoops up. How good. <laughs> so oh, a little hat. Uh, oh, it, it just works out. So like a little, a little fucking trucker caps with a little, little scooper on the front and a little fucking one off the back. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I've... Uh, my powers of manifesting stuff lately have been really fucking amazing. Blandies, so let's don't, go. Don't be surprised if this happens in the next <laughs> probably 24 months. <laughs> uh, be ready, Glenny, be ready. Did you, we did Social School Warriors one, right? We did. I'm ready already. Um, okay, the uh, Raiders 33 defeated South Sydney Rabbitohs 26. Uh, at the <coughs> stadium, the Raiders tries to Horsburg, Starling, uh, a hat-trick to Albert Hopawate. Croker, four conversions from five attempts, two penalty goals, and a field goal to Jamal Fogarty. The Rabbits, they had tries to Cartwright, Tass, Cook, and a double to AJ. And uh, Blake Tarfee, three of five conversions. Important win for the Raiders, albeit against Seas, who were Sands Mitchell, etc. Mitchell, etc. It's not um, like as bad as it the performance of- has been either, you know? I mean, it's half fat. their spine. <laughs> it's not very nice. Yeah, Cook's, yeah Cook no didn't cook. get picked. Yeah, those, those, oh, no, those, so, those, sorry, those, Cook didn't get picked. Those, I mean, they had, the, they had, the, injury, they had the injury to Camp. They had the injury to Campbell Graham, which meant he wasn't in Origin, but wasn't in their side. But otherwise, yeah, you know, not dissimilar to what we've seen. Yeah, fair call. Um, well, it's even more impressive then, isn't it? But the performance of Horsburgh and, and Papaliti up front, they've really put the Raiders on their backs and they were they were instrumental in in laying the platform which, which created the space for the halves. Um Rabbitohs, they came back at them, but the Raiders Raiders kicked again and um mm. fucking Altieri yep. eyes, turning back the clock. Week on week. <laughs> I was just going to bring that up. What do you make of that? Can fucking play I'm trying to, th- I'm trying to re- remember if that, if that sort of thing is ever... I, mean, I can't recall that ever happening. Like resting no. for a, resting for a my, game so they can have the milestone. Not to my home. recollection, but... I was, yeah. oh, look, I could... It's I a can Canberra see a team that... Do, quite, I mean, but, it's so congested this year. Like, yeah. I mean, teams from probably about 13 up have a have a reasonable shot. And, you know, like Can- Canberra, before that loss last week, they were they were playing for a share of first. Yeah. Um. So they're, they're, this is, they're a team in the mm. mix. And playing fuck piss ponies, resting players, and all, you know, all this shit in the middle of a live season... But really, that's it. He's it's he's come back program. from from time off right. this year. He's a couple a couple of games done yeah. okay. It's not like they've taken Latrell and rested him. Well, no. You know? mm. Anything else you want to say about that one? Not particularly. Good job, good good job, good job, Raiders. Nah, fair enough. Imagine Raiders, you would have been like, that would have been a seven game winning streak. If only. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas week two of losing the mid-strength teams and putting us farther from actual contention we really have left off the effort that saw us beat Melbourne and Penrith damn hopefully we pick focus back up before it's too late <coughs> Glenn Raiders did well to combat the positional changes required through injury tough win glad we played Rabbits without their origin players forward stood up 
Fingerson Jr. was awesome. Hope CHN is okay. Have we had any updates on him? Yeah, I saw an update from him himself, uh, like on video, like he's sort of, you know, you know addressing the camera. Um, and he's obviously got a battery of tests that have to be passed yeah. before he comes back in or anything. But like you know, with him doing the talking, you know, he sounded, he sounded fine. I mean, he, he, he seemed to be okay. Uh, from what I saw that it wasn't one thing that they think fucked him up on the field that night. It was like a, a series of, how was it phrased? Like a series of, of sub concussive blows yeah, fuck. in the lead up to it. So I don't think it was one. Yeah. It wasn't like one, one big hit that, and then he's just sort of stood up and then, you know, seized or whatever it was, whatever yeah, happened okay. when he drops. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was like, you know, fucking scary. And I must and actually credit to all of the, both players on both sides. I mean, the way they, you know, the way they sort of dealt with it and, yeah, it was good to see, but uh, it reminded me it reminded me of that the the game with the 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 Bengals and the Bills last year, where where you know Demar Hamlin just dropped after that after he after he took a helmet yeah. to the to the chest, and um, mm. it's fucking crazy. Mm. But um, yeah, I guess we'll find out in a couple of weeks That's what it. the deal is. But I, I I would expect that you'll probably I don't think this is like a a permanent or a long term situation. Yep. But given the way the game is at the moment, you know, I can certainly expect them and um, understand them putting him through an absolute battery of everything. That's it. Yeah, and definitely. making making triple sure before they give him clearance to get back on the field. 100%. <clears throat> nice. That's it. On to the next game. Okay. The Newcastle Knights 28 defeat the Mighty Manly Seeves Eagles 18 in Newcastle. The Knights uh, had a hat trick to Greg Marju, Bradman Best, Phoenix Crosland, and Dominic Young tries Hastings two conversions. Uh, Manly's tries to Garrick, Croker, and Saab. Garrick, two conversions and a penalty goal. It's really incredible. Like the other week, when I was talking about you know getting the potato content down out of the side. I think we've established who the fucking alpha potato because this game, I was actually really fucking happy with the application and performance of 16 out of 17 players in the squad. <laughs> One player, though, was so fucking bad. And it's no surprise, he's been bad for a couple of weeks when he's had his opportunities to get back into the side. But oh my fucking God, Cooper Johns needs to... I think I said last week, I heard he was going to give it away, give the game away, or he was thinking of giving the game away over the off-season last year before getting like a training trial mm-hmm. over at Manly. He probably needs to follow through on that. He plays, and I mean, like all the three of us have played enough footy to know. You know, when you got the, the you've got the the kid on the field that probably is probably there more because their dad wants them to be playing. <laughs> yep. They don't. They're not absolutely not interested in contact of any yep. kind, whether in defence, like making tackles or you know hitting the line, and they're just kind of there. Just they're just kind of there. Yeah. He is that fucking guy. <laughs> manifested into a fucking NRL position in first grade. And look, obviously a lot of, you know, these days a lot of a lot of dominoes have to fall. I mean, Schuster's issues of, you know, gave him more games than he should have had and Origin has brought him back into the side. But I'm pretty sure that we've seen the last of him in first grade, except through catastrophic injury. The Knights were fucking terrible in this game for the most part. And they really didn't get themselves into the game until they realised, I don't think they they realised where he was on the field. And when they did, they just started running exclusively at Cooper Johns, and it yielded fucking it yielded dividends almost every fucking time. <coughs> the defence from guys like Hamoli and um, and the guys on the inside, considering there was no Jake Turbo there, I was actually super happy with like the application and the fucking the level of like. I mean, the Knights could have scored another probably six tries, I reckon. And there were so many, like, disallowed tries and almost tries. and all the, They were just shut down by desperate, desperate cover defense. This game was legitimately... It was it was putting Jake Arthur in to start and not playing Cooper Johns at all. That was the difference between Manly winning and losing this game. And having having Daly and Tom out was the difference between Manly winning by fucking 30. The Knights were so, were, were so ordinary. Um... The good thing is, the positives I see on this is uh, from people I know who were at the game, apparently guys like Paseca and Sipley in the tunnel after the game were just fucking furious about, you know, about about losing, which I love to see. Yeah. 
I mean, they, and because those guys in the middle, fucking, they dominated, and they and they they didn't deserve to have all their fucking hard work undone by an absolute mud fucking player. Dare I say, inside agent too, given who they're playing. Yeah. Who who shouldn't be ever allowed near first grade again? Jake Arthur for the minutes that he got, oh, he was great. He fucking he, he shut it all down. I mean, obviously he's trained with the side what fucking twice probably, so he doesn't really know, you know, what to do or where to go. But I mean, he made his tackles, you know, he sent the ball where he had to when he had to, um, and you know, for a first for a first hit out for like half an hour or whatever, <laughs> yep. it's fine. That's and um and yeah. The, only, the the biggest problems in this game were, it was it was Cooper Johns and it was Sieves not hooking him fast enough. If he had hooked him around the 30, 30 minute mark, probably still a win. But um, it, he sort of waited until they'd scored a couple after the break, and then you know I think he was probably like what fifteen minutes in the second half, and it was just too little, too late. Fucking Croker in his uh, you know first game as captain, um, yeah he played he played a great game. Yeah, you know, everyone was mostly fine. I mean, the only other player I wasn't super high on was was Kohler, and that came down to the fact that he was outside of Cooper Johns and was served a massive fucking shit sandwich. Yeah, um, and just yeah, he had to deal with the fucking like he had to deal with shit passes from Johns, like pass behind him sort of thing. And it was one of those that he dropped when Manly were in, you know, on well on top and sort of handed the ball over in bad field position, which resulted in a try. Um, but yeah, otherwise, you know. I hate this fucking origin period, but I'm happy with the performance of uh, of most of the guys. And I think if Jake Arthur can get into the you know blend into the side and figure out his role in the side when Daly's not there, I think they'll be okay going th- going forward. Um, so what what's your take on him? Has he been brought in just purely as coverage and depth, or have, yeah. they, have they got their eyes on him for the six? I reckon what they'll do with him is um, Schuster. And this game, especially in the first half, I mean, you know, he was again just showing fucking ridic- the ridiculous skills that we know that he can bring to the bring to the game. Um, his issue is fitness in terms of not being injured, yep. and then fitness in terms of eighty minute player. Yeah. I mean, and and th- and they're the only variables in him becoming, you know, stopping him becoming great. Yep. Um, and this game, and he was he was a little bit quiet in the second half, and I put that down to KO Leeds <laughs> again, not fucking impressing me. I, mean, I was saying to friends that. that like I'm happy for him to learn the Gutherino and go and be fucking the next Gutho over at Parramatta. I, I'm I'm on the I'm at the point of writing him off because the amount of times where he would sort of stop in the line and not he he can't he couldn't do an approximation or like an imitation of Tommy you know with the sweeps and everything, which really fucked up a lot of what Schuster was trying to do on the left there in attack. But um, but yeah, I think I think Arthur. Well, I mean from Sebes' own mouth. He's got him in obviously to to, to be halves cover, yeah. Uh, because you know, he knows that fucking you know that Johns isn't the guy, but now now he's got a guy who so he doesn't have to use Johns anymore. And the other thing in in his interviews when he came in, because because of the size of of Jake Arthur, I mean he's fucking huge. Yeah. That he said he sees in that you know he's only because he's only like twenty or you know something like that. So he said he could fill out and be a ball playing back rower as well, yeah, okay, or cool. a lock or something as well. Yep. And I think that if he stays at Manly like long term, I think that's that's where his that's future his will lie because while he is young enough to sort of be like a, you know, a successor to daily in a couple of years, we've got guys that have kind of been marked for that already. So I think that he's, he's probably better off looking like a, yeah, halves cover for now and maybe move into like a ball playing back rower. Um, there you go. The night side Ponga, Ponga was, was pretty good. Once he, again, once he realized where Cooper Johns was on the field, <laughs> you know, he used you know, he used best well and um and uh, you know and and in addition to that you know that then made Mars you you know uh, get a lot of good ball as well yep but um I would love to fucking see the fucking brain scan because he copped a couple he, he copped he copped a good one from Saab like on the first yeah. fucking set of the game and um and that fucking that symbioting for Cola was absolute fucking bullshit I mean that was it wasn't high it wasn't late. Both arms were wrapping. It wasn't shoulder. <laughs> it was literally penalty and sin bin because you fucking hit Kalen too hard, and you got to be you got to be careful with Kalen because, as you know, he's had some issues with his head. So don't tackle him too hard, and don't don't tackle him 
with the desired velocity of rugby league where you're trying to whiplash a guy and fucking put it, you know, don't do that because you go to the bin. And some of that fucking refereeing in that game, two of those tries, the, the bunker in particular, I don't know who it was in the bunker, but whoever that cunt was was fucking cooked. And it wasn't just with tries. It was just like Manly had that challenge where they they came back and they said the challenge is unsuccessful. And then they thought about it for like a two minute, two more minutes, and they come back and go, "Oh no, it was successful after all. You're right. <laughs> you didn't do the thing, whatever you know, whatever it was. Your challenge is successful. You get your challenge back. And sorry, we're going to this decision. Like ridiculously fucking like late. Um, and that try, the try with Crossland was, was bullshit. The try with I think it was one of Marzi's one where Ponga took the pass and he then he bobbled it into Jason Saab and then and then he then he re, then he regathered it and then passed it again. Nah, like, I'm not no, calling there, that. There was calling. no touch. It, wait, he bobbled no it straight. He, he bobbled it straight into Jason he Saab. I mean, he, straight into his fucking Fuck hands. Man. Okay. Okay. And that one with Crossland as well, where they say like, I mean, saying the ball was stripped. Where I mean, there's a difference between stripping the ball and holding the guy's arm to stop the guy from grounding it because he's got the ball on the way to the ground and you're trying to hold his arm off the ground. Um, just, yeah, some terrible shit there. But we find ourselves still on the table ahead of those cunts, so to eat a dick. There you go. Ross. Mitch. <laughs> Mitch said, proof the NRL only needs 14 clubs. Sia should never have been left back in and these two Povo clubs can fuck off as well. Daniel. Um, Suck. Um, ramp- rampant autism. <laughs> Suck our Nova Catherine Cox from the back, manly scum. In all honesty, thought we would still lose that game despite the Eagles having so many out. Didn't get to see it, but interesting to see two of our bench players contributed a massive 14 minutes between them. AOB has no idea what he's doing with the team or the bench. Liam said, we lack DCE's direction badly, hung in there, but just didn't have the points in us. Johns is useless, and Schuster, although I rate him, just not ready to lead a team around. Gus. In the last 20, Manly were clueless near the opponent's line, generally lazy and uninterested. The Knights, like a lot of teams, showed how in the modern game, their outside backs need to do more. But Best and Co. putting some hard yards in the right team won. There you go. <coughs> right, so coming up, we have uh, the State of Origin, Game 1 in Adelaide. I'm not sure what the sales are like at the moment, but apparently they were quite slow earlier in the week. Uh, I'm sure PVL will flood the market with comp tickets to have it appearing foolish on telly. Mm-hmm. But uh, NRL also, you know, fumbling the, the assignment somewhat, putting ads out there, you know, trolling AFL in an AFL town. Yeah, that's it. Which is going to cause the opposite reaction to what they... <laughs> I mean, people don't... You don't go into someone's town and shit on their... I mean, it's a shit sport, don't get me wrong, but you don't go in there in, and shit on their sport. Oh, don't get me wrong. I... I fucking I put I put a comment on Instagram. Yeah. Right. Now I've put some pretty wild comments on Instagram posts in my days. But I put something on it was one of those videos where it was you know, and an American reacts to Australian sport. Right. right? And I was we fucking love that shit. As soon as soon as someone with an accent pays yeah. attention to something we do. We fuck it. We we eat that shit up. Um, this one was AFL, right? Right. And so I've just put in the comments, you know, don't don't let the highlights fool you. It's not actually a sport. It's a hobby. <laughs> um, mainly for special kids, and you get a point for still for missing the goal for just completely missing the object of the game. They they give you an attaboy. Yeah. Um, and, and honestly, if you had have just led with that and, and like left the other stuff out of it, I mean, you, you probably still would have got the same comments, but you would have been like, but no, it wasn't, it went for a week and they were <laughs> in my DMS and no one got threatening. Like there was no, I'll fucking find you and I'll fucking this, this and you know, so was it, it wasn't threatening. It was legit them crying about how can I be so mean to AFL? You know, and, and those players work <laughs> bloody hard, and, and they're so skilled oh, and talented. God almighty. Like, it was almost like, you know, beautiful and funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, oh. that's the wrong move, NRL. That's the wrong yeah, move. Yeah, I mean, you, 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 yeah, you don't go, hey, hey, your sport's shit, but here comes a real sport, and then yeah. they go, oh, fuck, I'm going to buy tickets. <laughs> no, they'll be like, I'm actively 
my yeah. family, yeah. everyone I know, are we going to actively boycott this? Because you come out it's the wrong way. That's it. Um, but also, Adelaide's not an event city. It's just not. No, it's like Melbourne. Know. They talk a good game, but they really don't show up when it counts. Yeah. So, anyway, New South Wales had some issues in the lead up to the game here with Latrell pulling out uh, due to a calf strain uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, what's become of the Cleary thing? Apparently, uh, had a toothache or something. Had a tooth looking infection. At, with, looking, looking at uh, withdrawing. Uh, don't know. Haven't heard anything. Have not heard anything at all. That one. That one. I think they would leave till the uh, the nth minute. Just take fucking six could, new offense and man up. Yeah, that's it. So, Queensland, remarkably settled <laughs> preparation. I don't think there was any, and not even an, uh, an inference that there was a, a flu or anything going around like there seems to be seasonally around this time of year. So, uh, perfect preparation, you'd have to assume, Glennie. Who wins and why? Generally, the flu hits game two, especially if we lose... Two impressive sides. Um, obviously, Luttrell is a big one. If the news about Cleary is true and he's not at 100%, oh, that's obviously not great. <clears throat> Willing and capable replacement in Nico Hines to, to come in if if needed and, and take some of that pressure off. But how, how that plays out, you know, you'd expect Cleary to play 80 minutes if fully fit, but if he doesn't, and then you've got to bring Hines in as a halfback rather than a utility or to, to try and capitalise or counteract strategically, that you know, I'm probably giving Fittler a bit too much credit um, using the word strategically, but um, interesting to see how they handle that. I, I like, I like Queensland. Um, I think there's there's obviously a lot of speed there, but but New South Wales, I just I just think the Mitchell out for an Origin game is is huge. He's he's a big game player. Um, obviously ruled himself out of the series last year, and um, so he could focus on South. I just I think he was he was he's prime for a big series and and to miss game one is uh, is a big out for New South Wales so I'll be tipping Queensland I think it'll be close que- Queensland should by far and wide be favourites going into this um, game yeah Ab- no no fucking doubt they should be absolute odds on favourites to win like, they they don't have chinks in that armour you know. Munster is arguably the best player in the competition on his day. They've got outside backs that are fucking big, strong, and powerful, and their forward pack's huge. There is absolutely no way that Queensland can or should lose this game. If they do, they're they're as big an embarrassment to the sport as last year's Parramatta Grand Final team are. I don't think they. I don't think they're listening to you though. <laughs> I mean, I understand the pressure you're putting on there. <laughs> Dad, oh. I don't think they're listening. <laughs> you know what? I don't. I just. You know, I'm with you, Nate. I'm all about manifesting. And somewhere, somehow, Queenslanders are fucking shuddering, realizing the monumental task they have in front of them, and and what happens if they lose. That they'll be tarred with the same brush as Mitch Moses and Clint Gutherson. That's powerful. That's that's powerful motivation, though. That's to it. like you, you, you're pretty much putting the shield in Queensland's hands already. Mm. I mean, with that with that level of motivation mm. that you're giving them, <laughs> and of course, New South Wales with their the good luck charm, <laughs> Tommy Turbo back, who's rid- ridiculously a seventy five percent winning record in the Blues, seven tries in five games at centre, which is two tries off the record for a New South Wales State of Origin yeah, centre. Fuck it. After like fucking like less than fucking three series, it's ridiculous. Um, only player to score two hat tricks, make it three. New South Wales, not by a lot. I'm not. I'm not predicting any hand grenades. I'm not fucking. I'm, you know, I'm not stupid. Let's be realistic. But uh, but New South Wales gonna win this one by eight. By eight, you reckon? Eight. 
just to give me a little period at the end of the game there where I'm not super stressed because it's more than a converted try. The game's going to end Dairy Queen for me. Not for you, not Glennie though. Yep. But it's going to be sort of nice for Glennie too because he's not going to be stressed about thinking he's got a chance of winning in the last two minutes. So it's going to work for everyone. What what do you reckon this does for for Fitler's legacy if he loses? He should this because year? I mean, and all, but uh, you know, and, and whether he gets asshole or not, though, I mean, yeah, you know, his legacy can you know can still be written whether he keeps the job or not. And I've said this to I've said this to you guys before. I'd, uh, Mal Meninga was not a successful fucking coach at club level. No, like, yeah, he was in, he was intelligent enough to understand when he had a, the generational talent on his side yep. to stay out of his own fucking way and let them win. Mm-hmm. Freddie is fumbling that fucking generational talent bag. It's his turn. Yeah. And he's lost fucking two series minimum that he should have won. He should have won. I mean, sure, he's had some issues with, you know, some big injuries like, you know, with Tommy out and, you know, Pappy and things like that. But he's also selected fucking Gutherson and Moses for games. Yeah. And shit like he's got to own own some of the dumb shit that he's done yeah. as well. So yeah, the, the whole the whole white and selection thing. Um, yeah. So that's that's the unforgivable bits. And when you look at the talent that's not going to be playing for the Blues, and I'm not through injury or whatever, but just through like non-selection. I mean, the guy he's got no fucking excuses. No. And so um, you know the players are going to have to do it for him because they, you know, anything anything they do to win this game is not coming from the fucking top. Correct. It's come from the boys on the field. Yep. New South Wales, 13 plus. Let's go. Payne Haas offloading to Tommy Turbo at will. Mm. Try after fucking try. Prediction. Tommy Turbo is going to score as many tries of try assists from Payne Haas as Payne Haas' mother has killed people. Really? There's there's, There's, yep, hat trick for Tommy Turbo. Fuck yeah. There you go. That we know about. (laughs) <laughs> if, he, if he scores more grab a shovel and start digging <laughs> that is fucking atrocious right now we've got a, an abbreviated round coming up for round 14 oh you affected as always we're starting off on Friday though the West Tigers taking on the Raiders this is traditional, traditionally a Raiders 60 burger game out at Campbelltown the uh, Tiger side what do we got here? Joe Offerhand Goway is out. <laughs> Gee, why? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Seafarth comes into the bench. <laughs> and your mate Stripper Cole is goes out um, off the club. <laughs> from the bench to lock. The Raiders side. Kroger is out. As, as we mentioned, rested so he can have his 300th at home. Um, Corey Harrier and Ira is out. Unsurprisingly, Hudson Young comes in. Matt Frawley comes in. Albert Hoppawade goes to centre. And Kotrick comes off the bench and into the wing. Can the Tigers Glennie. recover from the bye? Did it kill the momentum? <sighs> oh. No, just uh, gave us an opportunity to uh, to reset. Now, uh, it's probably not something you guys would, would understand, but a team that's going about revolutionising the game of rugby league that just needs just a little bit of time. Uh, they showed everyone what they were capable of against the, um, the the powerhouse and the juggernaut that is the North Queensland Cowboys by putting, uh, it was somewhere around 100 points on them. Um, to reset in the buy round um, and, you know, look forward to to take on the Raiders, their, their arch nemesis over the last several seasons. And, and you know, I'll, I'll be honest. To say the West Tigers haven't played their best football against the Canberra Raiders over the last decade uh, would be a reasonable understatement. We've, uh, we've played them when we've been up and been flogged. We've played them when we've been down and been flogged. We've played them when we've had stuff to play for and been flogged. We've played them when we've had nothing to play for and we've been flogged. So, this game is a game where we turn it all around um, and we make the Raiders look like the Cowboys and there's another 50-burger coming, but it won't be the Raiders putting it on the Tigers. We'll get one back. 
I think we'll be scintillating. I think we'll tear them apart. And uh, the cheap burger, cheap bourbon in people's hip flasks will be flowing on the hill at Campbelltown Sports Stadium. And the, the Raiders and their fucking shit fans will head back down to their fucking shithole licking their wounds after being absolutely fucking belted by 50 plus. Like they usually do. Fuck. Yeah. Sticking fireworks up their ass. That's what they do. It's the only thing. It's the only way they can fucking... I hope you're you're right, Clenny. I hope you're right, Clenny. Will we... What what fucking time is this? I'm down. Friday. Oh, actually... Yeah, I could, yeah, I think I can do it. Yeah, uh, I think I can make it. Game companion. Right. Yep. There we yeah. are. There we I are. I can do well it. Done. Second half. We'll be there. Um. Uh, oh, yeah. No, we got an early game for basketball. If we lose that game, I'm quitting game, basketball. Which, that's coaching. like the isn't it like the first real game? Okay. Oh, have you? Okay. Have you gone full sheet? No, no. We've played a few. We've Put Jackson a few. in centre. Why are you so why so why are you quitting after this one particularly? Because <laughs> I've been able to justify um, some some hard fought close losses because the teams that we've played have been fucking exceptional and we were still finding our way. This week, I know the team we're coming up against, yes, and um, if we can't beat them, we, we'll hang it up. <laughs> Like Sorry, no, no, not at all. Side. The can't afford prosthesis. Yeah. And if I have to listen to my... F- listen, we're, we're, we're a good 25 a, minutes, 20 minutes top from... Arm. Trying, <laughs> trying, to set, trying to set up blocks with one arm. <laughs> Got one eye, so the depth um, is way off. So... Oh, I need to give him a motiv- motivation to win now. <laughs> Good times. Look forward. Right. Warriors yeah, take on them. the Dolphins. <sighs> oh, this one's happening over in, uh, in Penrose in New Zealand. Um, the Warriors side, Freddie Lussick is out. Um, Sifakula is on to the is the out. Is uh, Tom Ale is out. Wade Egan comes back in. Dylan Walker comes back in. Mitch Barnett. So it's three big ins for the Warriors side. Dolphins, no changes to their Victoria side. Val Meninga's still sitting there in oh, 17. Did you see that highlight that was going around Twitter uh, from from uh, the Q Cup? Oh. Where he's he's a breakaway try. Down. Yeah. He's chased the guy down. Fucking up. <laughs> don't believe don't believe the rumors. The, the, the big man's got a fucking can motor. move. Fucking. Can he's got move. a fucking. He's got a 70 meter motor where he can fucking chase down yeah. outside backs like a king. Um, Warriors. Stronger size, yeah, you know, stronger side than than they than they were last week, and I mean they, you know, it was a creditable effort where you know a game that they could have won, if not for a brain explosion from uh, from from Pompey. That's it. Uh, deserve to be favourites <clears throat> at home as well, and the Dolphins. I feel like it's just we just say the same thing about them every week. They will compete in the game the entire time, and if the Warriors hand them, you know, good ball from mistakes. They've got the guys there that can, you know, they can score enough points. Yeah. I think, we, you know, the Warriors still have some things to prove about their game and their consistency. Um, and I, I think the Dolphins, if they've proved anything, <laughs> is that they're consistent in their performance. So I think it'll be a very tight game. Tough for the Warriors to... Uh, sorry, tough for the Dolphins to go over there and, yep. and, and yep. get a win on the road, but yep. I'm going to take the Warriors. It's like a class differential. But the Warriors, you know, if they revert to the Warriors of old, start making mistakes, not try, you know, start chucking around without earning it. Yeah. That's the, that's the shit the Dolphins love. Mm. Because, they, you know, because they, they, just, they play with discipline. The Titans take on the Rabbitohs. This one's happening down at Rabina. The uh, Titans side are without Brian Kelly. Kieran Foran, Cruz Leeming, and uh, Joseph Verna. In comes uh, Keanu Keeney. Um, Khan Pereira returns. 
Sam Verrills returns via the bench, mm. and Isaac Fasua Malawi to the bench. Jaden Campbell goes from fullback to 5 8, with Keeney going to one, and uh, Philip Sami goes from wing to centre. The Rabbits side. Jed Cartwright's out, Tane Milne's out, Liam Knight and Talis Duncan out. Campbell Graham comes into centre, Richie Kenner to the wing, Cameron Murray to the lock, and Jai Arrow to the bench. How uh, How's the Titans' depth in the halves when you've got to put Jaden Campbell yeah. from one to six against South's with, like, Kalama Tungy's going to have an absolute fucking field day running yeah. at Jaden Campbell. I love Jaden Campbell. I don't as like a him as a ta- I don't. I don't like him as a defender in the in middle. Attack. You know what I don't love? <laughs> no, no. I, I'm. I, I just. I don't like it. I think they're setting him up for failure. Um, I think they get much more out of him. The thing is, they don't have. They. I don't think they've got the, the options. Jersey, but then I. I I guess the, I guess they remember don't you got have Brimson, Brimson's six, out. So Kay, how and he handles not bringing, that? What happened to um? Yeah, sexy. Yeah, exactly. Is he injured? He must be injured. Sexy. Yeah. I don't know. And Kieran Foran, he hasn't trained since round once. twelve. Um, apparently, and wasn't present at training this morning. So um, okay. Mm. Which I'm okay with, yeah. but obviously he's carrying something that's. Yeah, yeah. That's pushing him out of the game, right? I don't mind him not training. Yeah. <laughs> it's for for the Titans. If he was still playing for Manly or, you know, but I'm okay with Kieran Foran showing up. Yeah. He's a professional. He's going to show up ready to play on game day. Um, yeah, it's a long, long I think preamble, it's a bridge too far yeah, for the, the Titans. Titans. Not get um, close. No. Rabbits yeah. have a big point to prove after last week's performance. Yep. No. Yep. Exactly. Campbell Graham back. That's massive. Um, right. Yeah, just too strong all over the park. The Sharks take on the Broncos at Reclaim Australia Stadium. The Sharks side. Connor Tracy's out. Talakai comes back into centre. Broncos. Okay, so Sale is out. Mariner, um, Palacia, Willison, and Piakura. We're all coming back. Origin players Walsh, Cobbo, Flegler, Haas, and Carrigan. And this one. Haven't been impressed with the Sharks the last couple of games. I mean, so while, while they, whilst, you know, they've found a way to, to win, very unimpressive in doing mm. so. Particularly in the second half, they really dropped off when the games were there to be, you know, won, you know, significantly by a big scoreline. Yeah. I wonder how many minutes how many minutes Nico gets to, to this in origin. This game. He just he strikes me as the type of yeah, he just strikes me as the type of guy that is one yeah, of those blokes yeah, that could yeah, play yeah, could. eighty in origin and back up a couple of days later and play and, and, and use that momentum and, and the spirit to to you know, they talk about it every origin um period every yeah. year guys that back up and, and play out of their skin because they've played Origin, you know, a few days prior. So he strikes me as one of those guys, and I think he'll need to be that in this game. As you say, the Sharks have probably just been stumbling a little bit, um, and, and it's been the cracks have been papered over by the fact that they've been winning games. But um, they're going to have to step it up a notch to beat the Broncos. I think the fact that they're at home helps them and, and yep, even so, the Sharks. And, in and a, the Broncos, again, I mean, while well, they, you know, they, they narrowly escaped with the win last week, I mean, they've been on a bit of a slide. Um, but yeah, I think the Sharks, you know, probably deserve to be favourites at home, but close. Like it's, you know, there's yeah. not a lot. There's not a lot in it. And if Queensland got the win on Wednesday night, and you get guys like Reese Walsh walking back into the side, mm. yeah, feeling fucking nine. ten feet tall because he's you know laid on three tries or something, then yeah. Handy yeah, favourite to Sharks. I don't quite 60, understand why it's that for wide. Broncos, so. I mean, this one would be. I, I'd see it as a much more even sort of game. Basically, I mean, you can look at the mm. you can look at the Sharks' record and go, oh, okay, True. they've gone like you know by win win in the last you know the last three weeks. 
Those two wins yeah. were fucking mid. Well, maybe they're looking at Brisbane's mm. record outside of Suncorp. Yeah. Yeah, well, how, how would you know what that is? I mean, they fucking play there every week this year. Yeah, so. <laughs> I mean, is there any evidence? <laughs> <laughs> Not a, yeah, if, you, if we go back to 2022 when they That's fucking bombed their way out of the finals, yeah. Okay, That's that makes more sense. Yeah, but, Sharks. Okay, let's go Sharks. The Roosters take on the Bulldogs, um, and this one's happening in Gosford. The Roosters, they uh, lose Jackson Parlow, Victor Radley, Brandon Smith. In comes Glenny's mate, Junior Polga. Mm. Joey Manu, Jared Maria Hargraves. Uh, Kiri goes from 5'8 to halfback. Mass- massive fucking move there. Drew Hutchinson goes from uh, <laughs> halfback to bench. Um, Matt Lodge, front row to bench. Tupanua, second row to lock. And Nat Butcher, bench to second row. The doggies. Adokar out. Tavita Pangai Jr. out. Sutton and Reynolds come in. I mean, you would assume that, that Addo Carr and Tavita Pangai are, are going to be back in for, for game day, right? Like, oh, well, actually, well, well, yeah. well, now no, I'm looking they're at it. Yeah, they're, no, they are in, they're, in the, they're in the 20. Oh, they extended. Or whatever, yeah. yeah okay. they're, in, they're, in the, they're in the back of the reserves. I mean, I'm, they're I'm in the reserves. Play, yeah, honestly. Yeah. Um, so those changes mean nothing to me for the Bulldogs. This is a big chance for the Doggies because the Roosters are fucked. <laughs> At they the are. Moment. They're in a they deep, are dark federally place fucked. And yeah. do you want to hear an interesting? You want to hear an interesting stat that I just saw? Federally the fucked. The Roosters. This. I just want to let me set it up for you. This competition, seventeen team competition, has the teams that wouldn't be considered an attacking threat, like like the Dolphins. Then you go back to traditional mud teams like the Bulldogs, <laughs> the West Tigers, the Gold Coast Titans. Yep. Hey, all those teams these, are shit. These these teams that cannot it's fucking score points. Fucking six points a week, well, let me tell you, this year, <laughs> year in the year of our Lord, twenty twenty three, the Sydney Roosters are the only side in the competition that hasn't scored thirty points. Fucking hell! <laughs> Where does it come from? You got two fucking <laughs> tiny halves. One of them is worried about fucking becoming Kalen Ponga. Oh, I think he's past that, right? Like that, 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 that was that was a that was a good good year ago, right? Uh, I don't I don't know I don't know. Yeah, the I, would, Joey I would say he's tiny. tiny. I mean, you got you got Sully, who's who's looking more and more disinterested by the week as he as he as he thinks about his big money move to rugby in a while. I, I hear that he may get a release mm. soon, like in within weeks, potentially. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, and I've seen WhatsApp screenshots of other stuff that could be causing friction within the East Oh, God. Um, <laughs> so, look, if you've seen them, you know what I'm saying. Oh, yes. And also, if you've seen them, you also go, yeah, that actually does ring really fucking true as well. <laughs> Certainly much more so than the WhatsApp stuff going around last year. Um, I, look, I'm not super high on the dogs. I don't think they're great by any stretch of the imagination. But for this game to be with the bookies with the roosters a dollar thirty to the bulldogs three dollars fifty does not fucking does even it, wider of a just, sports bet three seventy five for the bulldogs <laughs> I think this is a much closer game than what the, the than what the, the bookies seem to be indicating. Um fuck it. I hate the dogs. I'm tipping the dogs. There you go. Big one. Plenty. Are you with me? I think the Roosters Based will win. Based on what, though? I think the Roosters will win. Oh, fucking... Tedesco's done nothing, and James though. James Tedesco and, and fuck all else, if I'm honest. Well, yeah, I mean, like, people That's don't change their name when they become mid. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> I just the thing the thing with the Brewsters is that I'm, I'm not a guy I'm not a Lindsay Collins guy. Um, letters letters is immediately yeah, the only player the in history to escape the manly he's, curse. Uh, he's still having those it's moments becoming, becoming an injury in, injury pro nothing when he leaves aside. Um, yeah, Jake Turpin. You know the fact that. 
<laughs> the fact that Veril was let walk and and he's now wearing the nine. Um, obviously, Cheese being injured, but the, the you know fuck you say there's a lack of depth that <laughs> highlights it right there. Um, pair of fucking butchers in the back row. Give me a break. The Roosters in this position where they had these guys, uh, these forwards just, who were serviceable on the bench for that reason. They were, you know, they were, they were, they were yeah. okay and serviceable on the bench. Now these guys are the starting guys. And I just don't think it... And to be fair, their bench... Yeah, with Crichton and Lodge and... Yeah, yeah. yeah I know what you're saying. stronger than... Then <laughs> Crichton, Lodge, Nathan Brown, and Drew Hutchinson. Fucking put those cunts in there, and but it actually team, looks like a Can a team, can a team relying on um, service? Not that I'm a Nathan Brown guy. Jake but... Turpin do anything at all? Yeah, I'm just look. I've already tipped him. I don't. I don't know why you're trying to convince me. But... <laughs> mm. It's still the dogs, though. I have zero oh, yeah, faith. I guess, I guess zero faith in the, the dogs. Me having zero faith in either of them. Roosters. Now. I'd rather flip a coin and see chaos mm. come up. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So we agreed. Doggies, 13 plus. <laughs> Cowboys take on the Roosters storms. Me. Up at the abattoir <laughs> in Townsville. Cowboys. Derby's out, Hampton's out, and uh, Finifuaki is out. In comes Semi Valame. Haven't heard that name for a while. Tom Dearden and Jeremiah Nanai. And Jetski goes to the bench. I can't believe he's still on the fucking side. And uh, Lucky Lelua goes to second row. The Melbourne Storm side. Kamikamika goes from front row to the bench. Big Nelson goes from bench to front row. Otherwise unchanged, pending any potential injuries coming out of origin. Cowboys have been, you know, they were destroyed as an organisation not two weeks ago. Um, the Storm slowly but surely starting to find their way back out of the purple plotters and into the, the Melbourne Storm that, you know, you kind of expect a side with Munster and Hughes in the halves. Um, Harry Grant. Nelson, like, there's just just with those guys, yeah, I agree. I think that's probably enough to yeah, beat the Cowboys. Yeah. Um, yes, the Cowboys are at home, but it's it, it's not the fortress that they might lead people to believe these days. And I think um, Melbourne, I think we talk Melbourne about the floor, the floor the I think Melbourne done. have a, a controlling baseline level of play that the Cowboys in 2023 haven't, you know can't really rattle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just the, the muscle <laughs> yeah, memory exactly. of Melbourne. Uh, the is, Panthers is take on the Dragons the Cowboys. out of Penrith. Um, no changes to their round 12 side from the Panthers. Uh, the Dragons. Uh, Jack Bird's out. Mbai is out. Couchman is out. In comes Ben Hunt, Billy Burns, and Jaden Sewer. Uh, Sullivan goes from halfback to bench. And Murdoch Masilla, second row to bench. Do we need to really discuss this? No. Dragons are absolutely fucking shambles at the moment. The Panthers have probably put 30 plus margin on them. Mm-hmm. Oh, fucking there please. The only thing that will stop 50 is the fact that Tyron Peach is <laughs> in us. Look, while that, he has had please. some ordinary <laughs> touches, as expected, he's actually, I think, as a neutral, <laughs> hey, I feel just... he's overperformed. Yeah, I, I'm chugging Jay's Kool Aid. I feel he is. I, I feel Jay's he is overperformed two in his opportunities. Ago. Consistently, no, he fucking given. hasn't. He fucking hasn't. He's he almost single-handedly cost them two wins. With I feel like that <laughs> yes. they didn't start becoming the Penrith of old until Peachy was in the side. I feel he might be the catalyst. <laughs> you, you also think. You also think oh, DC is a good oh, player and that Tommy Turbo's oh, hamstrings will stop it, last another oh. season. Oh, the fucking so far so good. <laughs> both of both of them are proving it. No, week in, week Turbo's out. been out injured all fucking season. Oh fuck! No, he hasn't. 
No. <laughs> no yes. Right. We don't the, need to discuss this plus. game, so let's not discuss me- I don't Penrith versus why these Manly. These arguments need to be made when I'm <laughs> when I'm just giving a massive compliments to a player Stop. in your side. No, you're not. Stop. I, I, you, you don't understand the pain. Make it. Why and I the pain? Why the, yeah, yeah, I, I, that's right. That, yeah, I don't, I don't understand the pain. Just be, like he's, I mean, I don't understand the pain of having a player who's fucking a descendant of a player that was actually good in my side, fucking shit up. Not to this extent, I don't, you do not. Yeah, <laughs> not to this extent, you do not. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you think you do, and that makes it worse. You're me tooing oh. our me too. <laughs> You're me tooing our oh. peach too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the round. Everyone else has got to buy, and that's it for episode five eighteen. Thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, as always. Hit thisweekinleague.com and grab the links to all our socials and uh, Patreon and other communities. Um, that's all the report for now. Any closing words, gentlemen, before we move on? Are we going to be doing? Are we? Are we doing anything for Origin tomorrow night or what? Are we? Are we doing a I'm second down. half game companion? I'm down. Yeah, yeah. We'll do something. It might be a game Done. companion. It might be our initial thoughts straight after the game. We'll find. Yeah. We'll sort something out. Yep. Yep. Done. Awesome. Yeah. I'd say I'm probably well, more likely that, to do thoughts straight after yeah, the game. Or we, can, we, can do ga- can. we can do the game companion thing without Glenn. Without a busy man. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm, oh, hey, buddy, can't I'm giving you the night off. this fucking shit again. Stop it. <laughs> this is the same shit you're doing with fucking Tyrone Beach. When people, Beecher, when, when people give it. you the night off, you say thank you. You don't fucking <laughs> launch on them. <laughs> <laughs> no. When you say anything, I say fuck you. That's how my, say, that's how my life for the last 14 you. years is gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's correct. That's <laughs> right, how our relationship works. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Solid foundation. Thanks for, for giving us a, bit, a few uh, moments out of his busy day. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, boys. Later. Fuck you, Nathan. <laughs>